Hello chemistry students, it's me Dr. V and it's time to do some AP chemistry review. In this webcast we're going to talk about free response question number six from the 2018 exam. If you've worked through other AP chemistry exams, you know that the short free response questions are scored out of four points and this is a short free response question. In terms of test taking, really you want to spend about eight minutes on these questions on your first pass through. If you don't already have your calculator and your periodic table and your formula sheet, pause the video, go grab them, and come back. And I also recommend that as I show you each part of the problem, that you try to write out your own solution. Pause the video, write out your answer, and then go on with the video to hear my explanation. And then keep track of your score. Would you have earned the point or not? This is really helpful as you're learning to write more thorough, more detailed responses, responses that are going to get you full credit. That's how you get better as a student. All right, let's jump right into the problem. As soon as I saw that diagram, I knew this was a question about a galvanic cell. A student sets up a galvanic cell at 298 Kelvin, and it has an electrode of silver immersed in a one molar solution of silver ions, and an electrode of chromium metal immersed in a one molar solution of chromium ions, as shown in the diagram. The student measures the voltage of the cell shown above, and discovers that the cell voltage is zero. What part of the cell is missing? And why is this component important for getting a non-zero voltage from your galvanic cell? Well, what's missing is the salt bridge. The salt bridge connects the two solutions with ions that can move, and it allows ions to move between the half cells, and that maintains charge balance. And that is what you needed to say to earn the point for part A. I do want to go a little bit further. In the salt bridge, AP chemistry students really need to know more detail about what's happening you need to know that anions move through the salt bridge to enter the anode compartment, and cations move through the salt bridge to enter the cathode compartment, and this is how we're maintaining charge balance. The question continues with part B. I'm seeing a table with some half reactions and E naught values. The student adds the missing component to the cell, so we've got a salt bridge now, and the cell voltage is measured to be plus 1.54 volts. As the cell operates, silver ions are reduced. Use this information and the information in the table to find the following. Calculate the value of E0 for the half reaction for the reduction of chromium ions to chromium metal. Now we need to think carefully as we work through this. We're told that the silver ions are reduced, and that means that the half reaction involving silver ions to silver metal is going to stay as written. But both of the reactions that were given are written as reductions, and of course we can't have both species undergoing reduction in a redox reaction. And that means that the chromium half reaction that we're given here has to be flipped or reversed in order to get a cell voltage of 1.54 volts. So in other words, we have to oxidize chromium metal to make chromium-3 ions. Now when I'm thinking about calculating cell voltages, I approach it as keep the one with the larger value for E0, flip the reaction, and change the sign for the reaction with the lower value of E0. Since we're flipping the chromium reaction, that means we have to change the sign of E0. The difference between E cell and the E0 of the silver half reaction is 0.74, but that's really the oxidation potential for the oxidation of chromium metal to chromium ion. We want the reduction half reaction, which is the reverse of what I just wrote. And therefore, E0 for the reduction of chromium-3 to chromium metal is negative 0.74 volts. If you don't have that negative sign for the E0 for this half reaction, you will not get the point for this part of the question. But wait, there's more. Part B continues, write the balanced net ionic equation for the overall reaction that occurs as the cell operates. Now we already know that the silver ions are reduced, and so we know that we're going to keep the silver half reaction as written, so I'm going to write that down. However, we have to oxidize the chromium half reaction, as we were saying. So I had to flip the second reaction. I always like to write these with my arrows lined up so all my reactants are together and all my products are together. The other thing I have to pay attention to when I'm writing this net ionic equation is that I have to show conservation of charge. The number of electrons lost in the oxidation half reaction has to equal the number of electrons gained in the reduction half reaction. So looking at the silver half reaction, that's got one electron. But the chromium oxidation half reaction involves three electrons. And so what I'm going to do is multiply the top half reaction by three. 
so that now three silver ions are undergoing this reduction. And that means the number of electrons lost equals the number of electrons gained. And so the electrons effectively cancel out. And now I can add up all my reactants and add up all my products for my net ionic equation. And this is what you need to have written for one point. Things to just pay attention to. There should not be any electrons shown in your net ionic equation. It's also critical that you have correct charges. It's 3Ag+. Plus. It's Cr3+. Plus. If you don't have those ion charges, it's not correct. And there's one more part. Calculate the value of delta G for the overall reaction in joules per mole. We're going to use the equation delta G equals negative NF E cell. This equation is found on your formula sheet, but it's also really handy and one you should know. You certainly need to be able to use it. If you recall from the previous screen, there were three electrons transferred in the overall reaction. Remember we had to multiply the top half reaction by three, and there are three electrons involved in the chromium half reaction. So that's telling us that N here is equal to three. That's the number of electrons transferred. F is the Faraday, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And E cell, of course, we were given as 1.54 volts. I want to remind you that volts are defined as joules over coulombs. Sometimes it's helpful just to think about what the units involve. So we can substitute and evaluate. Delta G equals negative 3 electrons times the Faraday times 1.54 volts, or 1.54 joules per coulomb. And we get an answer of negative 44,600 joules per mole. Just as a reminder, because this is a voltaic cell, delta G is going to be negative. And I also want to point out that for a voltaic cell, E cell is always going to be a positive number. Those are just patterns that can help you check your work as you go. This is the work that you needed to have in order to earn the point. It's not so much that you had to list out your variables, although that's always a good idea, but you do have to show the work where your answer is coming from. And the negative sign is critical here. How did you do on this problem? When this question was given in 2018, the average score was 1.49 points out of 4. If you earn 2 points, you're doing just fine. If you got 3 or 4 points, you're doing very well and you should be pleased with your progress. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can get all my latest videos and study chemistry every day. That's how you get better.